Today I'm doing an unboxing of the Retivis RT619 walkie-talkie. Just a note in advance, these products were provided to me free of charge for testing, but all opinions are entirely my own. Anyone who watches this channel and who is interested in the radio stuff, this is one for you. These are more walkie-talkies from Retivis. It's the RT19 and the RT619, depending on whether you're in the FRS region or the PMR446 region. And yeah, they, I mean, Retivis have seem to just churn these out. They seem to, I don't know whether they just like go to various manufacturers and just sort of say, yep, we'll have that one, we'll have that one, we'll have that one. And just it doesn't matter that this one's only got an LED on the left hand side, this one's got it on the right hand side. We'll call it a different model and we'll shove it out there and see whether different people buy it. But they seem to have a load of different models. Let's take a look in the box and see what we've got. Well, they're fairly loosely packaged. It's all kind of very much, you know, nothing's kind of super held in place or anything like that but that's all right i mean these are only you know these are these retail at 28.99 so 28.99 i'm not sure how much how much they are in pounds uh probably similar i would have thought really small radios and there's our there's our standard manual we'll won't pay too much attention to the manual no one ever does do they really stand uh, really small radios these very kind of slim design quite similar to the rt622s uh but actually even shorter i think very sort of stubby if I put them in, in my hand, you can see, you know, there's not much to them at all. So I know some of you out there will be wondering whether or not you can change the RT619 and RT19 from uh, low power to high power. So, you know, PMR446 radios are legally bound to not transmit more than 0.5 of a watt. And uh, these radios work in different regions, so they are capable of 2 watts, usually. And it's asking a bit much, maybe, for a 1300 milliamp hour battery, but um, yes, you can. You can do that. You can't do it in this programming software, however. This is all greyed out stuff here. If I go zoom, firstly, I'm just zoom in a bit here so I can actually see what's going on. This is all really, really small and looks like something from 1992 on Windows 3.1, but never mind. And the CTCSS stuff here that you can change, you get this nice little drop down. So there we go. Yeah, I can make changes to that if I want to. Transmit power. No, no, that's grayed out. Bandwidth. Yep, you can change that. And um, we've got our function scramble or companded and what scramble method we use. And then we have a frequency hop function. And I did ask them about this, actually, because I was sort of thinking, well, I'm not absolutely sure what that is. Some of you out there may know, and you might wish to put a description down in the comments. But I went back to, uh, went back to them and asked them what frequency hop was about. And here was the response that I was given. So if you want to pause the video, just take a read of this. I'm not quite sure it's any clearer to me now than it was before I asked. But uh, there you go, that's the description. But if you do know and you have used this feature, please do put down a, dis a, a description in the comments of what this does might help others as well. So if you want to change this to X power, you're going to have to do that in the uh, DAT file that you can save out of here. So if I go to save as, I can save down a DAT file, which is just like a comma separated file, really. So I'm just going to call this uh, power. And let me bring that into my capture window here. There's my power.dat. And I can right click on that and edit it in a, I'm going to edit it in Notepad++. Plus 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 plus. Notepad++. Plus plus. And the reason, reason I'm doing that, I would suggest you don't edit it in any kind of rich text editor or anything that will shove in any kind of carriage returns. It's the standard thing, right? A proper text editor. The only one that exists really in Windows is Notepad. Uh, and that's a very, very basic one. I would suggest Notepad++. It's a far, far better, far superior text editor. So here we go. You can see you've got your comma separated file. You've got your transmit frequency, or is it receive first? I can't remember which. Receive. Receive first. So receive frequency, and then it's comma separated, like transmit frequency, and then you've just got various flags for the different settings. Now, I'm not absolutely certain whether this reads out the same for everybody, but I found it was the um, eighth setting along, I think. So it was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, I think it was this one, but you might want to experiment with that and just kind of try it for yourself. But, um, you know, you can just literally change this to a one for whichever ones you want to have on full power. So maybe you just want to have the first two channels on full power. And uh, you can 
do it do it that way but do try it try it out see which setting changes it because all you have to do is save this file down so save your power file and then open that file back up in the software and then you if you've selected the right flag you will see these two change it's as simple as that i mean it's not meant to be done because it's not legal to do it in the uk but you know just do it anyway it's fine it's fine okay don't anyone have a moan at me about that Right, so you can also change the frequencies. And uh, I'll just put a, an image up now because I, I was messing about with this the other day. And uh, that you, you can clearly see here that I've changed the frequency on uh, the radio down way, way below the PMR446 range. And uh, these, re these radios, I think, will go from anything from 400 up to 480. So you can change the frequencies in exactly the same way. So just edit the notepad file, change the frequencies here, Save it, load it, write it to the radio, job done. So let's just take move the box out of the way there and take a uh, quick look around the radio. I'm just going to zoom in on my camera here and we can have a look around the radio. So RT619 and 3.7 volts, you would expect. This is a less than or equal to 0.5 of a watt output. On the right-hand side of the radio, we have a standard accessory port which is, you know, your sort of 3.5 and whatever that smaller one is, uh, which, you know, is usual for these type of radios to have and will presumably work with Retivis cables and other Retivis accessories. And there we have our charge charging port, which Retivis are still using micro USB. So a bit behind the times there. I would like to see that change to USB-C just because it's simpler because it's uh, two-way. You know, you can, uh, turn, you can pl plug it in whichever way you like. On the top, we have the power on button, and this button also switches modes because on the right-hand side, you notice there's no channel buttons or volume specifically, and that's because it's all controlled by these buttons here. These buttons perform a number of functions. You can switch the modes by pressing this briefly here, and then these go either up or down in channel, and then if you press it again and switch modes on the top here again, they go up and down in volume, and if you long press, you get different functions again. Push to talk is rubberized and is nice and positive. Yeah, that's perfect, perfect amount of press on that. It's not gonna to press too easily like on the RT1s, which just are way too easy to press. Just the right amount of resistance there. I always talk about the push to talk button. I think people probably think I'm a bit weird for going on about the push to talk button so much, but this is so crucial that this is nice and easy to press and just the right amount of resistance and stuff like that because you've got to use this potentially with gloves on and just get to it easily and you don't want it pressed when it's sort of on your belt clip or uh, sorry on your belt or in your pocket and that's to me seems just about right stubby presumably stubby kind of helical ant antenna there uh, i'm absolutely positive the range on these will be equivalent to all other Retivis radios, they're all pretty much the same. All, all PMR446 radios tend to perform pretty much the same range-wise, so don't expect any kind of miracles out of one radio or another. Uh, so let's get the battery attached. The batteries are just in the bottom of the box here, and unusually, actually, they are sort of pre-fitted. They're almost like sort of lithium polymer cells uh, because they're the kind of flat type rather than, I mean, they know it says lithium ion there, but yeah. Uh, they're like almost like old style mobile phone batteries and they're pre-fitted into the rest of the casing for the 619. A little bit unusual, haven't seen that design before. Let's plug that, let's slot that in. So that, yeah, nice positive, nice and positive when I slot that in, just undo it at the bottom there, I think. Yeah, so that comes out. It's not going to, don't think that's going to come out easily on its own. Let's just try that actually. No, nope. no, nope, that's not going to slot out easily. And then we've got a single screw up here, which is the belt clip. And the belt clips come in the box too, along with these, these little kit, these little tie things that I never put on. But the belt clips are just basic metal things like this. <laughs> super simple just a little fashion little bit of metal and they will just fit in place there like that uh, I don't think you need much of a belt clip because they are really really lightweight these radios let me just zoom out just a touch they're really really lightweight really easy to fit in the hand and uh, I think that's probably going to be the big selling point of these is the fact they are so compact uh, nice small radios so let's get one powered up 
see what we have. Standard Retivis power-up, your three-tone sort of increasing uh, pitch tone uh, Retivis power-up with the gentleman announcing the channel number. So am I on channel? No, so this is volume now, so you can hear as I press it. So there's how many stages? So I'm at the top there because it's giving me a lower tone. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight. So eight stage volume, and I'm at the bottom. Four, so I'll put it on four. So yeah, as I say, to change change channel, 12. just press that to change mode. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Yep, now we're in, we're in channel mode. And again, press and hold these. We've got monitor on there. Press and hold. I don't know what the other one is set to at the moment. I suppose there's probably a few things that you can set that to. And uh, that's really about all there is to it. Let's just so let's just power up the other one and see whether or not see how they sound. I'm just going to slot the battery in the other one here. So that's on channel one. Yes, yeah, I, I want to go to the bottom. That's bottom, one, two, three, four. Right, I'll put it on four, and then... Oh, that's off. <laughs> God's sake. Five. That's off. Five, four, three, two, one. So I need them on the same. One, two. Right, so I'm just going to uh, go out of shot now. I'm going to hold this up to the mic, and you can have a listen to how it sounds. One, two, one, two. Sounds particularly uh, tinny to me. I'm just uh, speaking directly into the mic. Let's just turn up the volume on here a little bit. One, two, one, two, yeah. Yeah, but very, uh, very tinny, but I think you would be able to hear what somebody's saying. Uh, you could just whack up the volume and you would understand somebody, but they do, I mean, there's no kind of decent audio to them. They're particularly tinny, but I sort of expect that just for the size of the casing. LEDs on the front, orange when you transmit, green when you receive, and that's all there is to it. I'm now a good few weeks on from when I first did the unboxing of the Retivis uh, RT619, and I just want to give you my thoughts on it now. Um, I've taken it out a few times, tried it out, and just to see how well it performs, and I suppose in summary, would I recommend you buy one of these? Probably not. I think uh, Retivis do better products if you're willing to spend a little bit more. And even if you just want to spend the same amount of money, the RT622 uh, is probably going to be a better bet. And I'll tell you why, or at least my opinion why. Firstly, what's the good about this? Well, it's really, really compact, as I say. It's super nice because you can just slot it in your pocket. It's just, you can hardly feel it's there. You can put it in any pocket and it, you just don't even kind of notice it, which is really nice. Uh, but uh, it... The range-wise is fine. It performs just as well as any other PMR446 walkie-talkie, really. So, yeah, it's it's fine. You can pick it up. It works. It functions as a walkie-talkie. But there are two things that I cannot get over with this walkie-talkie, which is why I would not recommend it, really. Firstly, the fact they've chosen to do that kind of switching button on the top to change, change the function of these two down the side here between volume and channel is just a pain. It is awkward. There's a lot of time when I need to change the volume on a walkie-talkie when I'm using it. As such, having to figure out whether I'm on channel mode or volume mode or how, and not having any immediate way of telling how high the volume is just doesn't work for me. Might work for you. I guess you can only try it uh, to see whether it works for you, but that to me is a silly, silly design. The RT622, as I mentioned, that just has a standard volume control, a little switch on the top that you turn to you know, adjust the volume. You can tell exactly by putting it up to the top, see how high it is, and then bringing it down a bit to whatever you want it to be. This, there's no way to do that, and I hate it. I really don't like that at all. The second thing is the volume. The audio on these is pretty poor. Uh, it's pretty, it's quite tinny, and it's really quiet. So we noticed when we were out that if there's any kind of traffic or any background noise at all, really, you 
just can't hear it. I imagine if you've got it kind of mounted here on a bag or something, or you know, just on the top of your uh, top of your coat or your jumper, you would probably be, be able to hear it. But if you have it anywhere else, sort of on your belt or uh, just in, you know, if you any, any other anywhere else on your person, really, you just can't hear the thing. The volume is so quiet on it. It's just no good. If you're going to be out and about and everywhere, you know you're going to be somewhere really quiet, like, you know, you're out for a walk in the hills somewhere, you know there's not going to be too much noise around there. So, yeah, you'll be able to hear it there. But the output, the volume audio on this is just not good enough. So other than that, yeah, it works fine. Say battery life was fine, range was fine, and it works as a walkie-talkie. But I couldn't rec really recommend this. Go with something else, spend a little bit more, go with a different Retivist product, because they do good products, but this, the RT619, is not the one for me. Hope that helps make a decision if you were thinking about buying it. I'll put links for the product uh, in the uh, description anyway, uh, but I might also put links for the 622 as well, just in case you are more interested in that one. It's the same sort of size, same type of battery, but it's just got the rotary volume control and the audio is a little bit better too. Thanks for watching, I'll see you soon.